Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, the webinar just starts and the topic of today will be how to optimize peak power efficiency while using uh, partial structure on rated power. So we're going to cover this subject uh, during the webinar of today that should last for around 30 minutes. And before we start, I'm just going to wait for two minutes before starting the, the presentation to wait for some more people to join and then we will start the, the presentation. Uh, maybe as an additional information, after the webinar, you will find by email the recording of this webinar and you will also have access to, uh, to associated resources that could be helpful for you. While we wait, we wait, sorry, I will also maybe introduce myself quickly. So my name is Hélène and I work as a technical advisor at Rated Power for the Francophone and Indian market. Uh, and yeah, we will wait for one more minute and then we will be, we will start the, the presentation. Also at the end of this presentation, we will leave around 10 minutes for a little Q&A session. So if you have any question, feel free, to, feel free to drop it in the in the chat. I will wait for five more seconds. And I think we can start. So hi everyone and to everyone that may have joined uh, since the webinar have started. So today the, um, the topic is optimizing peak power efficiency through partial structure. And we will basically discuss during this webinar how to install past partial structure in rated power. Why is it interesting to install them? And we will also discuss in general um, how to define your structure in rated power. So for the people that didn't hear my previous presentation, my name is Hélène Laurent de Sartre and I work as a technical advisor for Francophone and Indian market at Rated Power. And here you can find my email, email address. If for instance, after the meeting, you have some question that comes up, you can write me an email and, and ask me a question. So here is the, the structures of today's presentation. So yeah, I will first start with a super quick presentation of rated power and what we do as a company as, and as a software. Then I will discuss how to define your structure inside the rated power. And then as a last point, um, I will mention the, the partial structure utilization in rated power and also other tips to increase the installed peak power in your, in your plant. And then I will finish with a, with a Q and A session. So to start, I wanted to present briefly for the people here that don't know what we do as a company in Rated Power. So Rated Power is a SaaS company that is part of the group, the American group Eneverus, that work in, uh, that uh, provides software for energy analytics and also for, for instance, PV plan design. And that's what Rated Power as a, as a software and as a platform help developer do. So with Rated Power, you can develop and design your wall plant, get your layout, and also work on the electrical con uh, configuration and also the financial analysis of your plant. So to, I think the best way to show you what we do is to, to open the software and to start the presentation. So here on the screen, you can see the home page of Rated Power which is, as I said, a tool that helps developers so develop the plant and do all the layout and also the electrical configuration, for instance, of the plant. And it's a software that is based on the cloud and that is collaborative. So all of the users from the same company can work at the same time on the same project and iterate at the same time. So for today's webinar, I have already prepared um, a project that is right here that it's called partial structure. And I'm going to open the design process to first 
explain to you a bit how it works in terms of structure and power and how you can define the structure that you are going to use uh, in your specific project. So for the structure definition, it will be in this tab, which is the equipment tab. And in this tab, you will find your PV module, inverter selection, and also your structure selection. So here, in order to define your structure, you will have many steps, a few steps. Uh, so the first step will be to define the type of structure that you want. So here you will have the choice between tracker structure, fixed structure, and east-west structure. And for each type of structure, you will have access to a database of structure. So here, for instance, in the trackers, if I click on change structure, I will have access to the database of, of tracker structure, where I can find many configuration and also limitation in terms of module per structure, for instance. And by clicking on view detail, and I can also have access to the, for instance, tracking angle range of the specific tracker or other characteristics to select well the tracker that I want. I also have the option for the structure definition to go here in equipment and to create my own structure. So I'm just going to show you quickly how you can do it. So in this part, you also have the option here in structure to click here on create new structure and then create your tracker or your fixed structure based on its parameter. So right there, you can fix all the parameters that are displayed on the screen. And then you can save it and this structure will be part of your private database of structure and be accessible for your whole, your whole company and you, you could all work with this, with this specific structure. So, oops, sorry, I'm moving a bit my screen. Uh, so that will be the first step to define your structure. Then you will have another element, which is the number of module per string. So here you will get a value automatically um, optimized and calculated by the software. So the software will use the PV module file, inverter file, and also the metadata in, on, in order to recommend for you a certain number of module per string and also a range of number of module per string. So here you will have a recommended value, but you will also have the possibility to change it if you want to personalize it. That will be the second step. And then in order to define the whole length of your structure, you will have here to select the number of string that you want inside your structure. So here, for instance, I have five string in my structure. So that means that I have five times 24 module in my, in my structure which is 120, if I'm not making a mistake. And it will give you this specific length. And then with that, the software, after you run the design, will place all the structure that it can. But as you can see here, there is some blank space because the software is unable to install the, the 68, 68 meter long structure in this space. So that's why the usage of partial structure which is the option that is right here, can be super helpful to use as much as possible the land that is available. So here I have generated a other design just to show you how it changed, and especially in terms of peak power. So here, for instance, we were at 11.6 megawatt DC. And if I go on this design, where I have so my main structure with still five string per structure, and also a partial structure of 55 meters that will be installed when the software is unable to install, install my main structure. As you can see here, I reach 12.6 megawatt DC, so in peak of power, so I gained uh, around one megawatt of installed capacity. So that's a case where it could be helpful to include partial structure. I have also generated other design with other configuration. And just to show you how it impacts um, basically the, all the KPI linked to the plants, I will select them and compare them right there with the rated power comparison tool. So here, as you can see, I have four designs that are next to each other. So the title are quite explicit. In this design, for instance, I only have, it's my first design, the one with only a structure of five strings. I also have this design with structure of five and four strings per structure. 
this other design with again partial structure but only one type so with five and three string per structure and then i have this design so the 37 one which includes so a main structure of five string and then partial structure of four three two and one string per structure so here i have them next to each other and with this data table i will be able to compare them and also to rank them from let's say from best to worst based on specific parameters so for instance let's say that i want to compare the installed peak power here i can click here and i will have my best design right there so the one with the, the main structure and all of the partial structure option so i can run them in terms of peak power for instance and i can also check uh, the specific price of my um the specific price of my of my plan for instance here so if i check the specific price here again i can rank my different design and here i can see that again this design so the one with the biggest number of partial structure is the best one and i can also um, check and compare them on many many other other kpi i would say that are both financial or energy yield um, related to energy yield production but on on especially on financial one and also on the peak power part i will have the best best result for the design that include um, partial structure and four different type of of partial structure so So that will be it for the partial structure part. I was reading one question in the chat and I will reply right after, but I just wanted to show you super quickly, just to finish the presentation before going to the q and I just wanted to show you super quickly, uh, just a few super quick uh, tips to improve the, to improve the, um, the installed peak power. So here, for instance, in this case, as you can see on my preview, I have most of my structure that are in blue, but I also have some structure right there that are in red. And here, if you check the, the layers right there, you will see that they are removed by the electrical configuration. So I can see them here, but if I go on the overview, for instance, I will not see this structure. And here it's the case that it's a case that you may encounter uh, quite often in rated power and it's actually quite easy to to fix it and to install this structure so here you will have to go to layout power requirement and then toggle this button which is the install the maximum peak power button and here so you will you will basically give more flexibility to the software because the structure that were in red here were not installed because the DC to AC ratio was of 1.2 exactly and was too restrictive. And here, if you so toggle this button like I just did, you can give basically more flexibility to the software by giving him a range of DC to AC ratio to test in order to install as much uh, inverter and also structure as possible. So for instance, between 1.05 and 1.35, and then by clicking on run design, usually with this option, you are able to, um, to basically install all of the structures. So that will be mainly it for what I wanted to present today. And now we can go to the, to the Q&A part. So I'm just gonna put back my, my presentation here and also check the question in the chat. Okay, so perfect. So I have four different questions. So I'm gonna start resharing actually my uh, my screen and uh, and the software screen. So first question, uh, the first question I had, but I think it was a bit before I explained. Maybe it was regarding the red structure that you can see on the layout. So here, um, the, the first, I would say, tips that I would give to someone that have red structure on the layout will be really to toggle 
the to toggle the button that is right here. So to install the maximum peak power button right there and to give more flexibility to the software. I would also say that in some case, in it can be linked to maybe a, a quite small terrain in comparison to the equipment that have been selected. So what you can do in this case is also choose to install um, a smaller inverter or in terms of power station, you can also try to have a smaller power station and connect less inverter to the power station itself. And that can be a, a great way of, of, let's say, removing the, the red structure and turning them blue. And if you want, again, and if you have questions like that, you can also find here an access to a knowledge base and you can look for specific actually answers. So for instance, if you have red structure and you are not in a webinar, you can look for it. And here you will have the list of all of the tips and all of the different case in which you may encounter a red structure and how to fix it, basically. And then I have uh, tuk, 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 another question. So how do you select the panel? Is there a database? So here I'm going to show you um, again how to do that in the software. So as said in the comment, uh, we do have a database for PV module and also for inverter and for structure. And when you select the, so the panel or module, here you can go here, click on change module, and then you will have access to a database of module that we try to update as often as possible. And here basically you can look for specific model of, uh, of panels. You can also run them based on the power if you want to if you want to, to select it based on that. And you will also have the possibility in the equipment tab that I showed you right there to import pan file if you don't find the specific panel that you want to use, for instance. And that will be the same for the inverter. So you can also upload your own inverter and you also have access here to an inverter database. So I also have some uh, two questions actually that are linked to partial string and to basically uh, have, for instance, a string of tw 24 module and then a structure of 12 module. So for now, this is something that we do not include in the software, but I will put that as a feedback and uh, and uh, usually our software development and actually always our software development is based on feedback. So I will write that down as a feedback and let the product team know that it's a, it's a need. So I see that I have twice this question actually. So that's the answer for the two, the two question. Three times, sorry. And then, then, I'm checking at the same time if I already replied. I have oh another one, other question that is not related to the partial partial string. So it's how do you find your financial results? So here for the financial result that I actually showed you during the comparison, um, it will be based on what you enter in the financial tab that it's right that is right there. And in this financial tab, you will first have to define the capex sheet that you want to use for your plant. So here, in this case, you can either use a default capex sheet that will be based on the IRENA data and also on the location of your project, or you can choose to define your own capex sheet and really put all of the entries. I would say that you that you want. So you can, for instance, take into account all of the element of the PV plant without without any problem. Oh, sorry, and you have the possibility to choose the currency right there to really include all the section and subsection that you want. And in the unit, you will find uh, basically all of the element of your bill of quantity, and you will be able to include them in the capex sheet. So that can be something that you do once, and then you can use your capex sheet for every project. After that, we have an OPEX part 
where you can define the OPEX and escalation factor for the plant. Then we have a part regarding revenue. So here you can either choose to set a fixed price for the whole, uh, for, for the whole lifetime of your plant or include a flexible price and upload energy price that will, that will change during the lifetime of the plant. And then you have in the financial um, parameters the discount rate that you can also set. And another element that I mentioned is the and that is taken into account in the financial calculation will be the lifetime of the PV plant and the number of shares on, of simulation. And you will be able to set it here in the energy part. And then as a result, you will have so the possibility to compare based on this financial KPI, KPI, as I showed you in the comparison tool. And you will also have every time you, you make a design and run a design, you will also have here all of the, of the financial KPI and result that will appear in terms of like that or in charts, if you want. Oops, sorry, I have to, to reopen the, the, the software that's fixed. Yes, yeah, so I was saying that you can see charts right there again for your different financial values. So that will be directly in the software. And you will also be able in the document to download the financial analysis that will uh, basically include all of the elements that you have that you have right there on the on the right side, but per year and in a more more detailed way. I'm going to show you super quickly this point uh, while yeah while Excel is opening. I'm checking if there is any other question, but I think I think I'm I think there is no no other question. Uh, so just to to finish the webinar, I will just show you quickly the the financial analysis result that we provide. So where you can see all of the, um, the evolution of the financial KPI through the lifetime of your plant. Beside you will have uh, so many graphs. You will also have a part which is which will be the, the capex basically and the calculation of the total price of your of your plant plant based on the capex sheet that you use. You will also have a part regarding revenue and another part linked to the OPEX. So since I don't see any more question, I think we can we can leave it here. Uh, thank you very much for attending the, the webinar. And as said at the beginning, you will have a follow-up email with, um, with let's say, uh, resources linked to, to this webinar. And also feel free to contact us if you are interested in a demo, for instance, if you are not a, a client or if you need help, uh, any technical help if you, if, you are, if you are already a client. So yeah, thank you very much for your time and